Hello, gentlemen. Patrick Ryan here, founder of Wingman for You. We help men confidently approach women so they can find the woman of their dreams. Gentlemen, this video is about the four different types of power struggles that occur in people throughout the world. Now, you might be asking, Patrick, why the hell are we going to learn about power struggles today? Well, here's the reason, is that all of us use these particular power struggles, all four of them, but we tend to focus on one. So I'm going to give you a little history about myself. I'm even going to tell you a little bit about my family, my parents as I grew up, because this is something I learned out of a book called The Celestine Prophecy. And I learned this probably about 20 years ago. And ever since then, I've been applying this to who I meet. That way, I kind of get a little bit better understanding of who I'm talking to. And if it's a nice looking lady, whether I want to take her out for a date. Guys, we've been talking a lot about mental stability here in the last few months because the, the pandemic has been pretty much so wrecked havoc on the entire world, on the entire planet for that matter. But I know it did for me as well. But because I know myself so well, and I know the type of person I am, especially during the, with these four different power struggles that I'm going to identify here in just a minute, I knew how I would respond. And I knew that my response was just internal. It's in my head. It wasn't really out in the world. I wasn't afraid of getting COVID. In fact, I've had it three times. So let's get on with these power struggles. And here, let me just explain to you what a power struggle is. You meet people, some people are really, really dramatic and other people are really laid back. And there's a reason for that. So let's look at the four different power struggles and you can decide on which ones you want to avoid and which ones you want to attract. And you might be able to determine or at least take a good guess on which one you tend to lean towards and use when you're in power struggle. Okay, first, my father. Fantastic man, World War II veteran. His father was a World War I veteran, both in the Navy. And my father was one of those fathers that would come home after a long day at work. My mom would usually have dinner ready, which was fantastic. We were a very old fashioned family. I'd sit down with my brother and sister, my father and my mother, nearly every night. We would have dinner. And my father was typically pretty quiet. He didn't really ask a lot of questions like, hey, how was your guys' day? or ask my sister how her dance class went, or how school went, or ask my mom how her day was. He tend to keep to himself. Well, these people are very easily described in what you would call a loop. Now, you may not be aloof yourself, but more than likely, you can, you can use aloofness sometimes to try to gain the power of another person. An example, you get upset at somebody, so you zip it, you walk away. And you hold on to that power for a day or two. There's some people out there that when they get upset at their spouse or their romantic partner, they just zip it up and they become aloof. They avoid you. They don't talk to you. Sometimes they won't even answer your questions. My father was aloof. Okay. Number two, the poor me. This was my mother. My mother was a poor me because she was kind of had that victim mentality. She felt like she deserved more than she had. Yet she wasn't the type of person who would run out and go get something or try to get more money or groceries or whatever it was. She just played the victim mentality. That poor me. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sad. Life is terrible. The sky is falling. Okay. Hopefully you're not a poor me, but it doesn't make any difference. Whatever, whatever style you identify with, it doesn't really matter because if you do identify with the poor me and that victim mentality, we can start talking yourself out of that. You can start doing mental exercises that will set that aside. Okay. Number three, the interrogator. Oh my gosh. Quite frankly, this is me. I like to ask questions. Okay. Maybe one of the reasons why I got to know so many women over that nine year period. Do you remember if you've seen my videos? dated over 250 women during a nine-year stretch. And I asked a lot of questions because I'm curious. I'm kind of like that four-year-old, that daddy, why, why, why? That's exactly describes me. Now, do I use aloofness sometimes? Yes. Do I lose the poor me? Sometimes, yes. 
And I also use the fourth one, which is the intimidator. Okay, the intimidator gets you in your grill, tries to intimidate you, maybe even tries to intimidate you with power, but they usually use their mind with intimidation. Get over here right now or else. Have we ever heard of that as children? Of course, that's the intimidator. So you may be asking yourself, Patrick, why are you telling us about these four power struggles, the four styles of power struggles? Well, I'm telling you because I believe that we need to basically become better at who we are, both mentally and physically, every day trying to make a little bit of improvement so that way we can attract the fantastic woman in our lives. So here's how this works, guys. The intimidator tends to intimidate people. And that's what helps them pull you towards them. Not a great way to go. The interrogator, Joe, me, tends to ask questions to pull them towards me. The victim, the poor me, they use, oh, I'm such a victim. And people go, oh, I'm so sorry for you. That's how they pull people towards them. And the aloof, they really want somebody to come out and ask them, hey, what's on your mind? But they don't. They stand back and pull you in by not communicating. Guys, I hope that this has helped you get just a little bit closer to the women of your dreams. Please hit the subscribe button. There's some fantastic videos out there that will help you find the women of your dreams. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.